So we'd like to describe very briefly some of the history of Jagannath Puri and Ratayatra for the pleasure of Vaishnavas. It is described how King Indra Jumana, he was a very great devotee. He lived long ago in a previous age. Although he was the king of the world, he had tremendous wealth, tremendous power. He was young, he was handsome, he had a beautiful wife, Gundita Devi, and he had a whole kingdom that actually participated and liked him. This is very rare today, a leader that everyone likes. So he really had everything a man could possibly want in life. He had power, he had fame, he had youth, he had wealth. He had love, but because he was thoughtful, he understood that without God, without Krishna consciousness, everything is shallow, it is hollow, it is empty, it is without substance. So he wanted to understand where is Krishna? Unless I know Krishna, unless I see Krishna, life is a waste. So one saintly person came to his kingdom and was speaking how the Lord has appeared in this world in the form of Nila Madhava. So it was his goal in life to find that Nila Madhava. For what purpose? To surrender to him, to serve him, to give his life to him. He didn't just want to see him. This is how we should actually come before the deity. So yes, in Dujumana Maharaj, he wanted to surrender his life to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, give his, his body, his family, his words, his life, his kingdom, his everything. Nothing has any meaning unless it's offered to the Lord. Whatever we eat, whatever we offer and give away, whatever activities we perform, whatever words we speak, everything should be done as an offering to the Lord. Anything we have that's not being utilized in God's service is a source of bondage. It will be the cause of birth and death repeatedly. Therefore, a devotee wants everything to be used for the service of the Lord. So here's a king. He has so much. In one sense, he's like the proprietor of the world. But if he cannot use it in the service of the Lord, it's meaningless. It's bondage. So for this reason, Indra Jumana Maharaj so intensely wanted to find this Nila Madhava. And his most trusted minister, Vidyapati, he went searching throughout the world. And in Avanti Desh, yes, there he found Nilamarava. He was being worshipped by the Shabara. Shabara is pig farmers, very simple caste of people. And Vishwavasu was the leader. He was rendering such loving devotional service to Nila Madhava. In fact, the devatas would come down daily to worship this beautiful form of the Lord. So sacred. In the Kund, Rohini Kund, which was just close to the temple where Nila Madhava was living deep in a seclusion of a forest, Vidyapati saw a simple bird touched the water and assumed a forearm form and ascended to Vaikuntha. That is the power of the Lord's abode. So he returned and told Indrajumana Maharaj what he had seen. Immediately he came with his entourage. But when he arrived, there had already been a great storm that had devastated the whole area and Nilamadava disappeared 
This is described in the Skanda Purana. So he was on the verge of death. I came so close, but I missed the Lord. But then he heard voice. He heard the voice of the Lord that he will appear in a log of transcendental wood and the markings of Lord Vishnu will be present on those logs. So in the ocean of love and separation, Lord Jagannath Baladev and Subhadra were floating like logs in the sea in the area of Nilachala. So he was having them carved. As the deities were being carved, the craftsmen told into Jumana Maharaj that I want complete seclusion. You do not enter until I open the doors myself. So he was working. And Indra Juman Maharaj was so, he was so eager, lobha. He had such transcendental greed to see the Lord, to worship the Lord, to serve the Lord. Every moment seemed like ages of waiting as he was hearing the carving. And for some days there was no carving, there was no sound, there was nothing. So he became very much disturbed and he opened the doors. And there he saw deities that appeared to be unfinished. Ah, his heart was broken. What have I done? The craftsman was gone. He was actually on the verge of ending his life, fasting till death, the offense he had committed. But then the Lord spoke to him. Sri Narada Muni appeared at that time and explained everything to him very nicely. In the Upanishads it is described that the Supreme Lord, although he has no hands, he can accept everyone's offerings everywhere. Although he has no legs, he can go everywhere and anywhere. What this means is the Lord does not have material hands, material legs, or material senses. Ishwara Paramakrishna Satchit Ananda Vigraha The Lord's body is eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. It is pure spiritual. Therefore, yes, the Lord has no eyes like our eyes. His eyes can see everything, at all times, everywhere. So thus, Nirguna describes how the Lord, His senses, His body, His personality, is not under the threefold qualities of material existence. It is completely spiritual.